How is balance lost? Hi, my name is Doug. I've been a physical therapist for 30 years and I specialize in helping people learn to walk again. How is balance lost? There is a common perception that as we age, we automatically lose our balance. I believe the general public wholeheartedly believes the concept that as someone gets older, their balance simply gets worse and worse, that there's nothing that we can do to prevent balance loss. 30 years of being a physical therapist and reading a tremendous amount of research on balance and aging has shown me that that is simply not true. The concept of use it or lose it is very applicable to the concept of balance. If you constantly challenge your balance, you do not lose your balance. I have met people that are in their 80s, 90s, and even people that are over 100 that have excellent balance, that have no disequilibrium, that a lot of times have better balance than 70 year olds that I work with. The reason is they're challenging their balance. They're doing things throughout the day that keep their balance system intact. Another important misconception that the public has about balance is that once you lose it, you can't regain it. And all of the research I've read in my own experience, this is also untrue. I work with people every day that have lost their balance due to a neurologic injury like a stroke, a disease like Parkinson's, head injury, or people who have just not practiced balance for years and who are falling all the time. I can tell you that it is always possible to regain your balance. The key is you have to do it progressively. You have to start with a very, very small challenge, something that's not going to cause you to fall down, but will challenge your balance and kind of go from there. Balance can be improved if you safely do it slowly. Another misconception that I hear every day is that someone is falling because they don't have good strength. Oftentimes when people watch someone who's losing their balance or hear about someone that's falling a lot, the first idea is they must have lost all of their strength and if we improve their strength, they're going to stop falling. Study after study has shown this not to be true. It doesn't stop doctors, physical therapists, the general public, and well-meaning people from thinking that strength is the key to balance. I can tell you that there have been very good studies that have shown that if you take people that are falling and you improve their strength significantly, you, you have them doing CrossFit, weightlifting, powerlifting, all these different types of exercises, that they do get stronger, but they don't stop falling. The reason is because most falls are a result of bad balance programming. Most falls are because our system that tells us how to, how to handle an event where we're unsteady is just not well practiced. When you're young, you don't know how to resist a fall. So children that are first learning to walk, they fall all the time. But then we practice things like standing on one leg, hopping up and down, using a ball while we're running. We play sports like basketball. We do things like gymnastics. Our balance gets better and better when we're young because we're practicing balance challenging activities. As we get older, we stop doing these activities as much because we're busy with other things. But the problem is our balance declines because we're not doing these balance challenging activities. So when you look at someone that's falling, that's maybe 65 or 75 and they're starting to have some falls, the idea that they're having falls because they're weak is actually untrue. They're having falls because they're not practicing balance challenging activities as much. And so if you want to help someone like that, if you are someone like that and you want to prevent falling, what you want to do is practice things that challenge your balance. So why do people fall if it's not a result of strength? Well, if you look at people that fall, a lot of them have had injuries, usually neurologic. They've had strokes, they have diseases like Parkinson's disease, they might have had head injuries, concussions. A lot of people have altered balance because of neurological injuries. They might also have something like persistent vertigo. A lot of people also have orthopedic injuries that might make them severely weak or have incredible pain. 
Now that can limit your ability to balance. If you have an orthopedic injury, that also can affect your balance. However, when you look at the studies on why people fall, there is overwhelmingly one main reason people fall. And it's not neurologic injury and it's not orthopedic injuries or pain. It's a lack of practicing balance challenging activities. Study after study has shown that people, especially seniors that fall, fall because they stop practicing things that challenge their balance. They stop walking outside. They stop going through parking lots. They stop walking on the beach. They stop walking on uneven surfaces. They do that because they're trying to avoid falling, but that's exactly what leads to their balance decreasing and them being at more risk for falls. Even people that have had strokes or who have Parkinson's, people that have any type of neurologic injury that have had problems with their balance, by them not challenging their balance safely is what leads to their balance declining further after their injury. The best way to regain your balance, the best way to maintain your balance is to continue to do balance challenging activities. By far, of all the techniques, of all the exercises, of all the activities I've ever tried with clients, the one type of activity that helps improve balance the most is balance challenging activities. These are activities that make someone feel as though they're losing their balance. Most people avoid these because they're afraid that they're going to fall. And I agree, that's a very big risk. And to do these safely, you either need someone with you or working with a physical therapist or have some way to ensure that you're not going to lose your balance. But of all of the research that's been done on this topic, of all the things that have been looked at, and people have looked at strength training, different types of exercise, practicing walking, using assisted devices, even robotic therapies. By far, the thing that helps people gain their balance the fastest, and that is by far the most effective, are balance challenging activities. Now in my clinic, we do a wide variety of balance challenging activities using things like treadmills and overhead harnesses and obstacle courses. Our therapists are trained to do all different exercises and activities that force people to challenge their balance. The problem is everyone is at a different level. Someone who's had a lot of falls or maybe they've had a stroke or complex set of problems, what challenges their balance might be something as simple as just standing without holding on to anything. But for someone else, maybe someone that walks and maybe even participates in marathons, but has suddenly begun falling again, they might need to do a much more complex set of exercises on a treadmill with a ball. The truth is you have to challenge people at whatever level they're at. So you always want to push them a little bit harder to get to that next level. That's what's been shown to be effective in study after study. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to work with a therapist or trainer that's trained in the techniques that you just saw, they can go to proprioceptiverehab.com to get training from me in exactly how to do this. I offer a course in proprioceptive rehabilitation for physical therapists and personal trainers.